Hello <clears throat> and welcome back. In this reading, we're taken into a steampunk vision of a factory producing human beings, and then a picture of the creation of time and space. One of the main points that Blake makes is that spectres create their own destinies, but it must come from a spiritual power base, so that when life is lost, it's only the body that's lost. If they had sprung from a natural base, their whole existence would end when their life was lost. <clears throat> Another point concerns cause and effect in life. Blake must have been very, very well aware of uh, the huge discussions going on among the philosophers about the nature of cause. But he came down on the side of cause originating on the spiritual plane. What we see as cause is just a delusion, he says. Many of Los's family work in the factory. The men in Baulahula and Alamanda and the women in Cathedral. It broadly equates to the men capturing the spectres and providing their innards and the women supply their skins. We're given the beautiful picture of Losa's son, Antamon, forming the spectres. And then what I think is the comic vision of Theotormon and Sotha frightening them out of the vagina to be born. Blake draws on the speech of Theseus in A Midsummer Night's Dream to express the creation of forms given to airy nothings. It conforms well to his thinking. It goes, The poet's eye, in fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. And as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. So with that, we'll turn to the reading. And every generated body in its inward form is a garden of delight and a building of magnificence, built by the sons of Los in Baulahula and Alamanda. And the herbs and flowers and furniture and beds and chambers continually woven in the looms of Ina Tharman's daughters, in bright cathedral's golden dome, with care and love and tears. For the various classes of men are all marked out determinate in Baulahula, and as the spectres choose their affinities, so they are born on earth, and every class is determinate but not by natural, but by spiritual power alone, because the natural power continually seeks and tends to destruction, ending in death, which would of itself be eternal death. And all are classed by spiritual and not by natural power, and every natural effect has a spiritual cause and not a natural, for a natural cause only seems it is a delusion of Ulro and a ratio of the perishing vegetable memory. Some sons of Lo surround the passions with porches of iron and silver, creating form and beauty around the dark regions of sorrow, giving to airy nothing a name and a habitation delightful, with bounds to the infinite putting off the indefinite into most holy forms of thought, such as the power of inspiration. They labour incessant with many tears and afflictions, creating the beautiful house for the piteous sufferer. Others, cabinets richly fabricate of gold and ivory, for doubts and fears unformed and wretched and melancholy, the little weeping spectre stands on the threshold of death eternal and sometimes two spectres like lamps quivering and often malignant they combat heart-breaking sorrowful and piteous antimon takes them into his beautiful flexible hands as the sower takes the seed or as the artist his clay or fine wax 
to mould artful a model for golden ornaments. The soft hands of Antimon draw the indelible line, form a mortal with golden pen, such as the spectre admiring puts on the sweet form, then smiles Antimon bright through his windows. The daughters of beauty look up from their loom and prepare the integument soft for its clothing with joy and delight. But Theotorman and Sotha stand in the gate of Luban anxious. Their numbers are seven million and seven thousand and seven hundred. They contend with the weak spectres. They fabricate soothing forms. The spectre refuses. He seeks cruelty. They create the crested cock. Terrified, the spectre screams and rushes in fear into their net of kindness and compassion and is born a weeping terror. Or they create the lion and tiger in compassion of thunderings. Howling, the spectres flee. They take refuge in human lineaments. The sons of Ovot, within an optic nerve, stand fiery glowing, and a number of his sons is eight millions and eight. They give delights to the man unknown. Artificial riches they give to scorn, and their possessors to trouble and sorrow and care, shutting the sun and moon and stars, and trees and clouds and waters, and hills out from the optic nerve, and hardening it into a bone opaque, and like the black pebble on the enraged beach, while the poor indigent is like the diamond which, though clothed in ragged covering in the mine, is open all within, and in his hallowed centre holds the heavens of bright eternity. Ozot here builds walls of rocks against the surging sea, and timbers cramped with iron cramps bar in the joys of life from fell destruction into spectrous cunning or rage. He creates the speckled newt, the spider and beetle, the rat and mouse, the badger and fox. They worship beneath his feet in trembling fear. But others of the sons of Los build moments and minutes and hours and days and months and years and ages and periods. Wondrous buildings, and every moment has a couch of gold for soft repose. A moment equals a pulsation of the artery. And between every two moments stands a daughter of Beulah to feed the sleepers on their couches with maternal care. And every minute has an azure tent with silken veils. And every hour has a bright golden gate carved with skill. And every day and night has walls of brass and gates of adamant, shining like precious stones and ornamented with appropriate signs. And every month a silver paved terrace builded high, and every year invulnerable barriers with high towers. And every age is moated deep with bridges of silver and gold, and every seven ages is encircled with a flaming fire. Now seven ages is amounting to two hundred years. Each has its guard, each moment, minute, hour, day, month and year. All are the work of fairy hands of the four elements. The guards are angels of providence on duty evermore. Every time less than a pulsation of the artery is equal in its period and value to 6,000 years. The crested cock used by Theotormen and Sotha <coughs> is a symbol of the end of night and the spectres run away from it in fear, to be caught in the brothers' nets of compassion. If that doesn't work, they create images of lions and tigers. Ozoth, another of Los's sons, resides with his family in the human eye, and blinds the rich from seeing natural beauty, while enhancing the view of the poor. He puts up barriers to protect the mind from the realisation of time and space. His work is countered by the architects and the architecture of time and matter made from the four basic elements, earth, air, water and fire.
But beautiful as this imagery is, we get the sense of a fortress and an imprisonment where the opportunity for freedom comes just once every 200 years. Blake alludes to a cosmic heartbeat equal to 6,000 years. This in turn raises the notion of eternal life of the cosmos consisting of infinite 6,000 year periods of fall and redemption. If seven ages equal 200 years, I think an age must be a generation and a symbolic understanding of the number seven must hint at spiritual completion. This provides then an opportunity for escape. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you again. Bye.